So we're going to be doing uh, the last lesson in this Colossians series, at least uh, as I've got it prepared now. We'll see if it's the last or not. <laughs> but uh, to start off with a little review, just a reminder, when Paul started, started out, he would go from synagogue to synagogue, and he would preach about who Jesus is. Well, that's where Israel fell. I mean, they they would not believe that he was the three things that <laughs> the gospel of God says he was to identify him. The Son of God, the Messiah, risen from the dead. Those three things. So, with that in mind, once he would preach in a synagogue and there would be some believers they would uh, meet together with, well, Barnabas, Paul, Silas, whoever was available. They would have meetings. And in those meetings, there were the two kinds of people. People that they all, well, all those that separated from the apostate synagogue in Corinth, when he came to Corinth there in Acts 18. Both God's husbandry, Israel, and God's building, the body of Christ. They had received the milk of the word from Paul in, in the synagogue, first in the form of the gospel of God. And we're going to read some of those verses just to verify what, what we're talking about here and, and to show that that's, that's the case. Acts 18, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And then verse 4, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And what did he persuade them? Uh, Acts 18 verse 5, and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So that's, that's part of the gospel of God, that Jesus is the Messiah. Paul preached first to the unbelievers in the synagogues the gospel of God who Jesus was, that he was the Son of God, not just an average person. And when he preached in the synagogue, he preached that. He preached that Jesus was God, the Messiah. Jesus was, excuse me, Jesus was the Son of God, Messiah, and uh, uh, risen from the dead. Jesus was God, too. That's a different issue, though. The... the uh, when we're going to read these verses and watch for, for the uh, gospel of God. This is Romans 1, 1 through 4, where Paul defines what he's talking about. It's, it's not a vague thing. It's not a general, generic thing. It's very specific. And time after time, and when it's used, you can, you can hear the emphasis that it's those three things uh, that we mentioned a minute ago. And we'll mention it here in these verses. Romans 1, 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. That means a sent out one. He had a s separate message. It says, separated unto the gospel of God. Verse 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, and then verses 3 and 4 tell what that... Uh, what he was separated unto the gospel of God concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord who was made well right there you've got two of the three don't you his son that Jesus was the son of God and that he was the Christ the Messiah his son Jesus Christ which was made of the seed of David the messianic line according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God there's a re-emphasis of the sonship of Jesus. Declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. There's the third issue, the third 
part or item in the gospel of God that proves who Jesus was and it's just the opposite of what the uh, apostate synagogues and leaders in those synagogues believed. All those that believed the gospel of God that Paul had preached to them in the synagogue, they exited from the apostate synagogue in Corinth. And you can see that in uh, Acts 18, verses 6 to 11. Those, to those who believed that that gospel of God, uh, Paul... Uh, now, we're talking about some that they were not in the synagogue anymore. They believed the gospel of God. Some had been called to be Jews, and some had been, we'll see later, a little bit later, some were called to be in the body of Christ, to, to hear and believe the gospel that Paul preached. But to those who believed the gospel of God in both groups, Paul would preach the gospel of Christ, about how to be saved. Christ died for your sins, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1-4. Believe on him to life everlasting, 1 Timothy 1, uh, 15 and 16. And then believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. That's in uh, Romans 4, verses 24 and 25. So going back to our Acts text here, Acts 18, verse 6. When they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he, Paul, shook his raiment and said unto them, Who's them? That's those apostate Jews that ran the synagogue and would not believe that Jesus was, uh, would not believe this, the gospel of God. He said unto them, Your blood be on your own heads. I'm clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And here's where we, we start to see some differences that we want to point out in Scripture. Paul would go to what Gentiles? What would then, uh, Paul, Paul, he would go to the Gentiles that were in the context who had believed the gospel of God that Paul, Paul, Paul had preached in the synagogue. Not the n Gentiles that were still associating with the apostate synagogue, the Gentiles that had believed the gospel of God. First, in Acts 18.4 said that Paul reasoned and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And it uses that term, the Jews and the Greeks. Then in verse 5, 18.5, uh, Acts 18.5, uh, it said that Paul testified to the Jews, singling them out from the Greeks. Uh, uh, that's my observation. It's, a <laughs> it's not in the text that it says that, but you can see if he testified to the Jews, leaving out the Greeks, that's, that's what happened. Then in Acts 18.6, it said that Paul will go unto the Gentiles. That's what we read a minute ago when, when they refused to believe the gospel of God. Paul would go to the Gentiles, singling them out from the Jews. That had to be the Greeks in the context. The ones, the Gentiles that were fervent, they believed, they were de devout, they believed the covenants made God made with Israel. And they were not Israelites, they were not Jews, but they did believe. And they came to God under Israel's doctrine. So uh, the Greeks, they were the ones in the context, the Greeks in the synagogue that Paul mentioned in verse 4, the ones that came out. And we can see in these verses the distinction between Paul going to the Greeks who were Gentiles in the synagogues and Paul later in Acts 28.28 going to all the Gentiles after Christ had sent him to all men. In Acts 20, verse 6, you can read he sailed away, and uh, according to Philippians 4, 15 and 16, it was, that was the uh, beginning of the gospel to all men, the gospel of the grace of God, I should say.
to distinguish as you can uh, l line up the comments about each of them you find out they're the same though I hope you can see the progression in scripture here in Acts 18 when rejected by the Jews Paul goes to the seeking Greeks who were the Gentiles in the synagogue uh, when he first went into the synagogue in Acts 20 Christ sent Paul with the gospel of the grace of God to all men Acts 20 verse 6 and verse 24 um, Acts 20 verse 6 oh that's when he sailed away from Macedonia Philippi Macedonia then in Acts 28 when Paul is rejected by the Jews, Paul reads them Isaiah's casting away curse. And then when, when he goes to the Gentiles, it is to all the Gentiles. You can see that in Acts 28 verses 25 to 29 and 2 Timothy 4, 17. So we're going to see in the following verses that Paul, having left the synagogue, now went beyond the gospel of God preaching to those gospel of God believers the gospel of Christ the gospel of salvation so what he did he gathered the ones that had believed who Jesus is the ones believed the gospel of God and he preached to them how to be saved the gospel of salvation the gospel of Christ Acts 18 verse 6 <coughs> When they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his garment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, I am clean. From henceforth I will go to the Gentiles. And Paul did just that. He went to the Gentiles who had been in the synagogues with him and that had exited with him from the synagogues. They're called Greeks. That is a distinguishing characteristic between this time of, uh, of going to the Gentiles, which the Greek, um, they, they were Gentiles that were Greeks, the intellectuals of the day, seeking the wisdom and knowledge of God. And the Acts 20 verse 6 time of being sent to all the Gentiles. There's a distinction there. And you can see it. Look at verse 7, the next verse in Acts 18. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. That's the only place I know of in, uh, in the New Testament or in Acts where it describes a place like that, a man that lived in a, a joint house with joint... <laughs> in a house joined to the synagogue that was like a duplex or whatever they were that close and this is the only place that you get uh, signs that were given for Israel because because uh, the body of Christ meeting was right you know a windows <laughs> a window away so to speak they could hear them probably I mean that's why uh, why they were given the signs uh, signs were for Israel the Jews require a sign they said where are our signs we see not our signs in Psalms so it this this new meeting place that they went to joined hard to the synagogue it was in the same building like a strip mall or a duplex they were on different sides of the same wall <coughs> and that wall was parting between them they began meeting in the house of justice who who worshiped God so Paul and those gospel of God believing believers uh, they gathered with him they had very close proximity to the apostate Jewish synagogue and Paul was seeking the remnant according to the election of grace and you can find that proof of that in uh, Romans 11 5 11's 
Uh, Romans 11, 14, and 1 Corinthians 9, 22. <coughs> and that's why you see an abundance of body of Christ signs in Paul's Corinth assembly. Uh, excuse me just a minute, please. Okay, <clears throat> we know from 1 Corinthians 1.22, the Jews require a sign. The body of Christ, believers, the believers in, in Paul's, that were in Paul's gathering, were in a unique, very close position to show signs to the Jews. Romans 11.11, 11. so God gave them signs to save some of the Jews before the Acts 28 blinding and casting away of Israel. But that was unique. It was the only time. You cannot find the body of Christ's signs, tongues, and miracles anywhere else in the Bible. I mean, there are signs. There are, so, <laughs> there are some, some of them mentioned in uh, Romans 12, four to six, I believe it is, and um, I'm trying to think where else. There's a couple places, but they're not separate from this, and they're not uh, uh, um, as unusual as tongues or healings. Uh, that was only Israel because of the proximity, the closeness of the church to the synagogue. It's strictly that one occurrence. Acts 18, verses 8 through 11. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Hearing, believed. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get it to come to mind. Uh, Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So they heard and they believed. And then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. That was a good division. The, the gospel of God believers, no matter whether they were called into Israel or called into the body of Christ, believing the gospel of God, they had divided out of the apostate synagogues. It was dividing those that believed the gospel of God from the apostate disbelievers in the synagogue. Earlier in Acts 18 verses 4 and 5, Paul had preached the milk of the word, the gospel of God. As we can see at the end of verse 5, testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. There, uh, there, <coughs> excuse me please. So uh, there was no promise of salvation in the gospel of God that, uh, th that it was uh, Paul's manner to preach. As we see in uh, Acts 17, That's he, it became his manner to preach the gospel of God. Three Sabbaths in the synagogue. Uh, the apostate, Jewish synagogues. And that's when Paul's gathering began to be called the Church of God. It wasn't called that for long, but you can see it in, in uh, certain places in the scripture. At that time, there was not yet anybody in that gathering who had heard and believed the gospel of Christ to be 
immediately baptized by one spirit into the one body of Christ. So that is what they still were. They still were the church of God, as in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Sanctified is not necessarily saved. Sanctified is set apart for something. As in Romans 15, 16, where Paul said that the gospel of God might make its believers acceptable being sanctified. Sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Again, the Bible never says that the gospel of God saves anyone alone. When it's added to Israel's doctrine, it moved them from the apostate synagogue Jews to the believing little flock uh, church of God. But the gospel of God alone doesn't save anyone, believing that Jesus is, is the Son of God, the Messiah, risen from the dead. Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So calling upon the name, the name identifies Jesus, identifies him as the Son of God, the Messiah. Um, it's his identity, and his identity is what Israel failed to believe. In fact, they were against believing that Jesus was the Messiah. It's not our gospel of salvation. The gospel of God is not our gospel of salvation. Just to be very specific here, Paul was not calling the church, the body of Christ, the church of God. Okay? He called that separated out gathering the church of God before there was anyone in that gathering that had heard or believed the gospel of Christ, that gospel of their salvation. After Paul stopped entering the, excuse me, okay, um, after Paul stopped entering that synagogue to preach, then he would preach to that meeting of gospel of God believers that he had separated out of the synagogue. Paul would preach to them the gospel, um, well, the saving gospel of Christ. They got to hear it uh, because they believed the gospel of God initially. There were some that heard from Paul that believed the saving gospel of Christ being immediately baptized by one spirit into the one body of Christ. The Bible tells that they have a house eternal in the heavens. Uh, there were also, there were some, on the other hand, that retained their faith in the gospel of the kingdom. But now with Jesus, their Messiah, returning at some time with his kingdom to reign over the earth from Israel, in the land. In other words, they were little flock people, but before they heard and believed the gospel of God, they weren't. They were apostate. When they heard and believed the gospel of God, they, they were still called into the kingdom, but the kingdom was no longer offered. So they believed, as they did before Christ was born, that there would be a kingdom that was promised and it would come when Christ returns. So there were two groups within Paul's meetings and they were emphasizing their differences too much instead of emphasizing their sameness. It was hard for two types of believers to worship together when they were trying to outdo each other. My group is better than your group. Look at how different we are. We have this and you don't have that. You know, whatever. You know, <laughs> It can go on and on. Uh, 
That was the carnality to which Paul referred according to 1 Corinthians 3, verses 3 and 4. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? In other words, they were from those uh, from those teachers, they were receiving the doctrine, but to emphasize that instead of the, the oneness of their Savior and, and uh, the family of God, I mean, there are, there are parts of the doctrine that is the same for both. Uh, I mean, he's, he's the Savior of us. Paul did not reprove them for being divided. And we'll see in the next, tech, in, in the next uh, time here what we look at that Paul brought about the two groups meeting apart from the synagogue. And uh, Paul does not reprove them for, for causing additional division uh, dividing from apostate synagogue, but he does reprove them for causing additional division by their carnal envying and strife, trying to outdo each other. They were all of the faith of whom Jesus was the Savior and the foundation whichever group they were in. And they realized the difference between the two groups in that meeting. Each group knew what the other had believed to enter into their group. Remember, we're called by the gospel according to Second, second, uh, te uh, te second th Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. It depends on which gospel God calls us, and uh, during that brief period there, uh, just a few chapters in the middle of Acts, and, and uh, probably about a quarter of a century, the, uh, God was still calling people, and they had to recognize which, which calling they were receiving. Well, I'm sure the Lord made it obvious to them if they were to be still in the kingdom uh, group of believers, uh, or if they were to be in the body of Christ. The, the Lord supplied them with the gospel of the kingdom, believing that Jesus was the Christ, or God would supply those that are to be in the body of Christ with the gospel of Christ, just during that unique period. Each group knew what they had believed in, or their own group. One group, Israel, believed that at some time Christ would come back to earth, he would be coming back to earth as king to rule over them and to blot out their sins. And, and they believe he is Jesus, the Messiah, risen from the dead. That's all good. That's their gospel. The other group, the body of Christ, believed that Christ had died on the cross for their sins in order to forgive believers forgive them of their sins and that by believing on Christ on that basis they are saved from God's wrath and that they have a house eternal in the heavens they believed two different things two different sets of good news for two different groups of people at two different times Israel was ending, or you could say pausing. Uh, not my people, though. I mean, if they related what was going on with the prophecy about that time, they would, they would believe their ending. Th those individuals alive at that time would not be in uh, a privileged group, a favored nation, Israel. Israel would be a common place like any other nation, like the alien, alien nations. So Israel was ending while the body of Christ was increasing. But they both had the same Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. 
they had that brief overlap for about a quarter of a century, one generation, and the kingdom believers did not immediately die just because the body of Christ had started. The Israel of God people lived out the rest of their lives, and when they had finally died, the Matthew 16 Church of God had died of attrition. At, uh, that, that kingdom church had stopped adding to their number according to Galatians 2 9. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go to the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Well, that's who they were sent to, wasn't it? That's who Paul was sent to, the heathen. And as Paul advised in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 18, do I have sound? Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 18, they knew their calling, which calling each one had received. We don't know, <coughs> we don't understand that now because we're not under that condition. It was only those few ch in those few chapters that God was still calling people into those two groups, Acts 13 through Acts 19. Excuse me again, please. Uh, actually, God may have stopped calling uh, people into the two into the the uh, the circumcision group at the fall of Israel, but some of those having heard that gospel of the kingdom back then may not have responded until they heard Paul preach the gospel of God. <coughs> the gospel of God, that Jesus is the Messiah, the risen Son of the living God. To them that were called being circumcised, Paul said, let him not become uncircumcised. And they did not convert to believe Paul's gospel for them. They remained Jews, converted from apostate Israel to the little flock of kingdom-believing Israel, believing that they would be part of a future kingdom that Jesus, the Son of God, their risen Messiah, would someday bring from heaven to the land in Israel. To the circumcision, Paul had only preached the gospel of God, not the gospel of the circumcision. So don't uh, follow that mistake. <coughs> Paul did not preach the gospel of the circumcision to Jews. Those of the circumcision already knew the covenants and the commandments. Paul also said unto them that were called in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. So those in the body of Christ were not to try to become some sort of uh, hybrid Israel, or Messianic Jew, they had a problem there that we don't have. Today, there was, there's only one way to believe God for salvation. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 20, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Paul does not say that it's bad to have those divisions at that time, but he does say, they should emphasize their same Lord, the Lord of Paul, the Lord of Apollos, the Lord of Peter. They worked together. They helped Paul, knowing that Paul was preaching that Christ was the head of the body and that it was what God was doing in that day, just like he's doing it in this day. Uh, they also knew that Paul, Paul's gospel would be the only gospel of salvation in the very near future. 
as it is today. <coughs> but remembering their call being circumcised, they still worked together with Paul. Accompli in other words, they still believed the, circum the, the, uh, the way that the little flock did, the circumcision. But they they helped Paul, knowing that 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 his was the way to be saved for others at that time, accomplishing at least uh, some menial tasks such as handling the luggage, the, the bedding, I'm sure, and fixing meals, making ship arrangements. I don't know, uh, doing the laundry, possibly also security for Paul. So uh, let's get back to Colossians. Uh, in Colossians 4 verse 11, in addition to Aristarchus, Aristarchus and Marcus, we have a third person. We have uh, Jesus, who is called Justice, who are of the circumcision. These are, uh, now that's Jesus, and we're going to call him Justice, okay? <laughs> So there's, uh, we're not confused about Jesus Christ being one of those three uh, who are of the circumcision. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. It's all one sentence. So he's talking about former Jews or Jews uh, that would help in the body of Christ in in the preaching. I don't know if they preached it. It doesn't say they preached it, but in crowd control while Paul preached or whatever, you know, they, they helped in one way or another. It's interesting that in these last seven verses of the epistle, Paul mentions Laodicea, the Laodiceans, either one or the other. He mentions them four times. Plus, he mentioned Hierapolis and the church in Nympha's house. But first he talks about Epaphras, who was from Colossae, where he's writing, to, to where he's writing, and um, was serving Christ with Paul. He was one of the, the workers there. Paul said that Epaphras prays fervently for those in Colossae, that they may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Colossians 4, 12 through 14. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he does, he hath a great zeal for you and for them that are at Laodicea and them in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. But up there in verse 12, if Colossians 4.12, notice it says that uh, uh, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. So prayer is a labor. It's a work. It's, and we're not saved by, by works. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works. So prayer is not part of your salvation. Uh, you don't get saved by praying a prayer, whether it's a sinner's prayer or any other prayer. Uh, you don't labor to be saved. You don't work, no work's involved in, in our salvation. So uh, Luke, it's as if Paul is saying Luke, uh, he, well the verse read, Colossians 4.14, 4, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So it's like he, Paul was saying, Luke, I love him. He's my doctor. Paul was implying that he no longer could heal after the Acts period. Luke stayed on with Paul as his physician, which Paul needed, no longer being able to heal. After the dispensation of the gospel to the Jews and to those of the Gentiles that feared God and blessed Israel, according to Genesis 12, 1-3. Then 
we see that Demas was traveling with Paul like others did, hearing the same message and with the same opportunities, but he soon forsook Paul, having loved this present world. As Paul said in Second Timothy 4.10, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to, Dalmatia, to, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. And you can see a lot, a lot of times that that, uh, that very thing is still happening. It, it can be either loving the present world in a carnal way, or loving the praise of men, trying to find some new doctrine to teach, or, or uh, claiming it is in the Bible. There are many ways you can depart from the faith. Do whatever you have to, to not become a Demas. Stay in the Word. Stay in fellowship with other believers, Bible uh, believers, grace believers, Demas was miserably apart from what God wills for him and for you. If Demas was saved, then he was still saved, but he was not useful anymore in the body of Christ. Colossians 4:15 and 16. Salute the brethren which are in, uh, in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among, uh, among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that, they, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. Whether or not the, the rest of Paul's epistles were circulated like... Uh, uh, th these two verses here, they do assure us that Col the Colossian epistle was circulated and the Laodicean uh, epistle that was to them uh, was to be read uh, Hierapolis and, and probably Nymphus and those meeting in his house, they all got to, got to read the let both letters, I would I would think if I read that and I was there, I would, I would do it that way. I'd make sure that it got circulated, which I believe they did. Colossians four seventeen and eighteen, and say to and and let's see, uh, Archippus, say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Verse eighteen and the. Uh, the salutation by the hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. So we're about to close here. It's, it's likely, highly likely, that all of Paul's epistles were circulated since the word of God from God was given to be received and that is how we now have the Word of God today. Paul signed with his own hand, then Paul reminds them that he is in prison for preaching the gospel. Okay, we're done with that. Has any, uh, anybody got any questions? Please bring them up or put a question mark in text. So we, so we hold on. I think he was too, Dave.